Hi, I'm Dr. Mayberry. And we are going to talk about the upper limb today. We'll probably take a couple of installments. So this is for my osteology and forensic anthropology course. Um, so the landmark lists are not all inclusive. They are the ones that I expect my students to know. We're going to start with the clavicle. The clavicle is, people call the clavicle the collarbone. Um, so this is the clavicle. It's, it's vaguely S-shaped. Uh, there are a few landmarks that you need to know, and then we'll talk about siding it uh, and articulating it in the skeleton. So there are two ends to the clavicle. There's this rounded end, and there's this flattened end. So one of these ends, the rounded one, is the sternal end, which means that it articulates with the sternum. The sternum people call the breastbone. So the sternum is right here, and the clavicle is right here. So this rounded end, uh, actually there's a little cartilage in there, but it articulates with the manubrium of the sternum, which we'll learn later. So I say that the sternal end looks like it could be a stamp, like you were stamping letters or something that people used to stamp. The acromial end is this flattened end. I think that the acromial end looks like somebody took an iron and ironed it until it was flat. So that's how I recognize the difference between the two ends. Uh, so that's what I would write on my landmark list if I were you, but whatever it looks like to you, you can write. That's what the landmark lists are for. So we have the sternal end and the acromial end. Uh, now on your lists are the superior and inferior surfaces. So hopefully you remember that superior is toward the sky or toward the head, inferior is toward the ground or toward your feet or your tail, however you want to think about it. So the superior surface of the clavicle is very smooth. There really aren't a lot of ridges or bumps or anything on it. The inferior surface is actually really rough. There are a lot of bumps on it and we're going to have to know some of those bumps. So if you can remember that superior is smooth, that's going to help you. So flip it to the inferior surface and we can see a couple of different things. We can see this bump right here. This is the conoid tubercle. So the conoid tubercle uh, is one of your landmarks. It's toward the acromial end uh, and it's this bump sort of as the end bumps out here, curves outward, there's a protrusion. That's the conoid tubercle. A tubercle is a bump or protrusion. Uh, from the conoid tubercle to the acromial end is the trapezoid line. So the trapezoid line, this is the conoid tubercle, runs to the acromial end. That's where your trapezius muscle attaches. So that is yet another landmark. Both of those are on the inferior surface at the acromial end. Okay. We also have the costal impression. The costal impression is also on the inferior surface. It's actually toward the sternal end though. Costal means ribs, so this is where like the cartilage that attaches your ribs sort of articulates here with the clavicle. So the costal impression is sometimes it's a bump, sometimes it's a divot, uh, but it's right here. This is the sternal end. It's on the inferior surface and it's a little indentation or bump uh, where the ribs and cartilage articulate. So those are the landmarks associated with the clavicle. So now you have to know how to side it and what it articulates with. Uh, I told you that the sternal end articulates with the, the sternum, the manubrium of the sternum, but the acromial end, very simply, articulates with the acromion of the scapula. So if you remember the word acromion, it's, it's useful on more than one bone. Uh, so that's articulating over in the shoulder right here with the scapula, which is your shoulder blade. So other than that, you know, the cartilage of that first rib does attach, sort of, it leaves that impression, that costal impression toward the sternal end of the clavicle. Uh, but those are the only articulations of the clavicle. So it's relatively simple in that respect. Um, all right, so the superior surface and the inferior surface you learn. You learn the sternal end and the acromial end. So now you'll use that information to help you side it. So put the superior surface so it's superior. Okay, sometimes I see people put the clavicle like they think it sits like this or like this or some weird wonky way. The superior surface is called superior because it faces the sky. Okay, so flat, smooth surface, upward. Rough, bumpy surface, downward. Okay, now 
you know that the sternal end is this stamp-shaped end, and the acromial end is the flat one. So the sternal end must be medial or toward the midline, and the acromial end must be lateral or toward the outside. Okay, we're doing good. Now you have to remember, remember it two different ways. Can think hill before valley, which confuses some people because it, it makes them want to put it in like this again. But if you flip it like that just for a second and pretend you're riding a bicycle along the clavicle and you come to a hill before the valley, then you're on the correct side, okay? So this is actually a left clavicle. Now, the other way that you can do it uh, was actually shown to me by a student that I had in an anatomy class a few years ago, and he said he pretends that it's a little arm and it's hugging, okay? So you wouldn't hug like this, you hug like this. So if the acromial end is your hand in that scenario, it's hugging like that. So I, to be honest, actually sort of use both of them when I'm giving this presentation in class to double check myself. So I would encourage you to do that uh, on your lab practicals as well. So that is the clavicle. Uh, we will continue with the upper limb in a, another video and we will talk about the scapula in that video.